Now, there have been some wild and unique debuts throughout WWE history, but from time to time, WWE likes to debut a brand new wrestler by disguising them as an actual fan. This approach traditionally works rather well as the fans instantly relate to the wrestler in question and over the years some of the most iconic names in WWE history have debuted in this exact same manner. Join us now as WrestleMania looks at 10 WWE wrestlers who debuted as fans. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out WrestleMania.co.uk in an unwrestling channel, incredible. Number 10. Emma In 2014, when WWE made plans to call NXT's Emma up to the main roster, they had a clear creative vision in mind. Emma would appear in the audience on both Raw and SmackDown and gradually over a few weeks, the fans would begin to question Emma's motives and question why she was hanging around in the audience. Following her being planted in the audience for a number of weeks, Emma would officially become a member of the main roster when Santino Morella called her out of the audience for a dance-off. It was appreciated that WWE didn't retcon Emma's celebrated history in NXT as it was mentioned both by Santino as well as the WWE commentary team that Emma was previously a key part of the black and gold brand. This was a clever way to call up a talent from NXT and pairing Emma with someone as popular as Santino was a smart initial move on behalf of WWE. Number 9. Steve Blackman Of the lethal weapon Steve Blackman was one of the most underrated stars of the Attitude Era. Blackman's martial arts gimmick was way ahead of its time and fans had fond memories of Blackman's work, especially in the hardcore division. What is often forgotten about when it comes to Blackman is that he debuted as a fan back in 97. On the November 7th, 97 episode of Raw, Blackman would be sitting in the crowd and he would jump the guardrail to attack the Hart Foundation who were attacking Vader. He would be given instant credibility with his presentation and a substantial push would follow. He would be a part of Team USA at the 97 Survivor Series in a featured match against Team Canada. Following this push, Blackman would have a number of notable feuds in the Attitude Era with the likes of Ken Shamrock and Shane McMahon. Number 8. Rosa Mendez when Rosa Mendez took part in the 2006 Diva search, WWE believed that she had true potential, therefore they signed her to a WWE developmental deal. Fast forward to 2008 and they would decide to call up Mendez to the main roster and they had an interesting storyline planned for her. She would pose as a fan, specifically a Beth Phoenix super fan. Their support of Phoenix would escalate when Mendez jumped the guardrail to attack Phoenix's arch rival Melina. WWE would then declare that Mendes was banned from all future WWE events, but she got around this by disguising herself as a member of Melina's paparazzi. Phoenix would eventually hire Mendes in the storyline to be her and Santina Morella's intern, and this would ultimately be the highlight of a WWE run. She would transition into a manager for Primo and Epico in later years, whilst remaining active whenever WWE needed her. She had a decent run in the company that lasted over a decade, which was certainly a noteworthy achievement for the former Diva Search star. Number 7. Hillbilly Jim The debut of Hillbilly Jim was nothing like WWE had ever done before. He'd be seen in the front row of live events and he'd be known to fans as simply Big Jim. Eventually, he would appear as a guest on Piper's Pit and this would lead to Hulk Hogan training him to become a WWE superstar. In a series of vignettes, Hogan would be seen training Jim and even providing him with his first set of wrestling boots. This was a huge spotlight for Hillbilly Jim's persona and to his credit, he managed to get over with the audience and our fans loved what he offered. Although Jim never won a championship in WWE, he was a certified legend and would later be inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame in 2018. Number 6. Serena Deeb in early 2010, WWE would debut Serena Deem and their plan was for Serena to join CM Punk in a straight edge society. On the January 22, 2010 edition of SmackDown, she sat in the audience before she jumped over the guardrail in an attempt to get to Punk. Serena would scream, I need you, over and over and this was when Punk offered her a spot in the cultist stable. In unique fashion, she would have her head shaved which was just highlighted how dedicated and passionate Serena was about her role. Her initial WWE run ultimately came to an end after WWE ruled that she wasn't living the straight edge lifestyle in real life. Despite the WWE run not being what she or fans expected, she would have a number of guest stints in WWE a number of years later before becoming a permanent fixture of AEW's women's division. Number 5. Earthquake 
the earthquake had an insanely memorable WWE debut in the late 80s. On the November 11, 1989 edition of Superstars, Dino Bravo would challenge the Ultimate Warrior to a strength test. Bravo, along with his manager Jimmy Hart, suggested that a member of the audience should be picked and Bravo and Warrior would perform push-ups with a fan on their back. This was when the man who would be later known as the Earthquake would be selected. Earthquake informed the audience that his name was simply John, and when it was time for Earthquake to sit on the back of the warrior, Earthquake would officially become the member of the roster when he used a seated senton on the warrior. Earthquake would then perform several big splashes on the incapacitated warrior, making fans instantly know that Earthquake was a devastating force in WWE. This was an ingenious way for them to debut a new star, and it worked wonders for Earthquake's connection with the audience. Number 4. Zach Gowan a WWE likes to experiment with their programming from time to time and the in-ring debut of Zack Gowan was certainly an interesting storyline that transpired in 2003. Gowan would debut as a fan in May of the aforementioned year and would jump the barricade in order to help Hulk Hogan aka Mr. America who was being attacked by Roddy Piper and Sean O'Hare. Gowan had a prosthetic leg so WWE naturally decided to incorporate this into his debut as Piper pulled off the prosthetic leg completely. He would be instantly thrown into the big time as during his first few months he would work with WWE legends such as Brock Lesnar, Kurt Angle and The Big Show. He would even wrestle the former WWE chairman Vince McMahon. So it was evident that WWE believed that Gowan would be a huge star for the company. Now his run in WWE though wouldn't last too long as he was released in 2004 for having backstage heat. Nevertheless, Gowan looks fondly back on his WWE run and appreciates the platform he was given at such an early age. Number 3. Mickey James well, The WWE debut of Mickey James was executed to perfection. In October 2005, Trish Stratus would defeat Victoria on Raw and following the match, she would attack Stratus only for an unknown woman to make the save. This unknown woman was Mickey James. Jim Ross and Jerry Lola sold this amazingly on commentary as they had no idea who Mickey was and Lola questioned if Mickey came from the crowd. She would be declared as a super fan of Trish and this would be a storyline which would develop over the next several months. The storyline between the two would be insanely compelling and it was rare that WWE would devote this much time and effort into a women's storyline back in the ruthless aggression era. Mickey's admiration of Stratus eventually turned sinister, leading to an acclaimed matchup at WrestleMania 22. In the initial debut was the perfect introduction of Mickey to the WWE audience and she would end up being one of the most iconic female talents in WWE history. Number 2. Beth Phoenix One year after WWE hit a home run with the debut of Mickey James, they attempted a similar approach with the debut of future Hall of Famer Beth Phoenix. On the May 8, 2006 edition of Raw, Phoenix would emerge from the crowd attacking Mickey. It was then explained that she and Mickey were old friends, but Phoenix was swearing revenge because Mickey had ruined her life. This debut is often forgotten about mainly because Phoenix was taken off TV shortly after her initial debut. When she eventually returned in 2007, a rocket was strapped to her as she became the top star in the women's division where she would be cemented for the next several years. And number 1. Santino Marella one of the most iconic debuts of the Ruthless Aggression Era was that of Santino Morella. Morella would debut on the April 16, 2007 episode of Raw, which was emanating from Milan, Italy. Morella was present as a fan who was picked out of the crowd by Vince McMahon as an opponent for the villainous Umaga. Morella vs Umaga would be a match for the IC title and following some interference from Bobby Lashley, he would win the title in one of the biggest upsets in WWE history. It was a fantastic and memorable moment that still holds up over 15 years later. Morella would go on to have a rather successful WWE career, winning the IC title on a number of occasions and taking part in some of the most hilarious comedic segments ever seen on WWE programming. Well, there you have it folks, 10 WWE wrestlers who debuted as fans. Be sure to leave your comments down below and I'll see you next time with some more wrestling content.